Welcome to One Big Question. I'm Father Pete McCormick, joined by my co-host, Lynette Wookie. And today, we have a special guest and our good friend, Doug, and we are also on site at North Lodge. Lynette Lodge. Lynette? Lynette Lodge. North Lodge. Tomato, tomato. tomato. Come on. I know, for me, one of the best parts of the fall was uh, Library Lawn, and I hear they're bringing it back in the spring, but for now, we have Quad Lodges, and that brings me to our one big question of the day, What's the story with quad lodges? So we went to answer this question and we found uh, an expert of experts. Uh, the official title for Karen Kennedy is the Director of Student Centers, Activities and Events. But more importantly, this is a Notre Dame alumna, a Welsh fam resident, and a woman that I've had the opportunity to work with for a good number of years and someone that I so deeply respect for her love and care for students. And so Karen, welcome to One Big Question. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Welcome, Karen. And I mean, let's just jump right into it. You are the expert of experts, according to Father Pete, and I have to believe him. So what's the story with Quad Lodges? Let's, let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm so glad to be here and to talk about the Quad Lounges. So we created the Quad Lounges to be a place where students could gather and be together uh, during this time. So sort of like the student lounge spaces that we have in our student centers. As Lynette said, we know how much students loved library and South Lawns during the fall. And don't worry, they will be making their triumphant return uh, in April. But in the meantime, we hope that these quad lodges provide a warm, welcoming, inviting space for students to be together or just be outside of their residence halls during these darker months. Um, in the first few days we've had South Lodge open, we've seen students come in small groups to play cards or board games. Uh, we've seen a lot of students studying. Uh, we've seen students reading on their own, uh, watching TV, just hanging out and taking advantage of the activities that we have in the lodge. So um, in terms of your question, uh, the goal of both lodges is the same, but we intentionally wanted them to look and feel and be a little bit different. So. Mm -hmm. The South Lodge was designed uh, with a ski lodge type of feel, and it has both putt-putt and ping-pong available. And the North Lodge uh, was designed with more of a cozy art house feel, and it has both shuffleboard and darts available for fun. Uh, both have board games available for checkout after the desks in the evenings and fire pits uh, outside of them. So those fires will be lit Thursday through Saturday nights. And we even have blankets available for checkout inside at the desk so that students can extend their time around those fire pits a little bit longer. Uh, in terms of hours, uh, both lodges are open until midnight on Thursdays, until 2 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, and then until 11 p.m. all the rest of the days of the week. Wow, that's awesome. I I came to the Ritz, I guess. Wow, that's really <laughs> fancy. Dang. <laughs> Karen, I, I work over in Como and, and have watched the South Lodge be constructed. And, and just the other day I passed by and there were students in and out and having a great time. So, uh, so grateful for the work that's been done on this. A, a question for you, you know, there, there's some questions around the different types of tents that we seemingly have all around campus. And wondering if you could talk a little bit about the differences between um, the lodges and the other tents that we see in and around campus? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So, and I, I think that I get asked the question a lot, um, is are the quad lodges inside or outside, right? Uh, and the answer is when you're inside, it feels a little bit like, uh, like both. Um, so uh, they feel they are structured like tents. They have roofs and a structure and they are tents, um, but different from the other tents that we have on campus, the quad lodges have glass paneled walls, uh, which makes them feel and look both brighter uh, inside and out, but also a little bit more permanent when you're inside. Um, also, the quad lodges are tied into the university's steam heat system, uh, which is both great for energy resources, but also make sure that they stay warm and keeps the air circulating within them. Uh, in terms of policies uh, in the quad lounges, they function just like student centers. So different from dining tents and just like student centers, which means um, masks required, social distancing at all times, no eating, and you can drink in them, but you need to make sure that you leave your mask on between sips uh, when you're doing so. Oh, wow. Okay. And so does that mean there's hot chocolate there? Like, do you, are you providing it? <laughs> we are providing that, but you can bring in uh, what you have from the outside. 
That's awesome. Well, I'm, I know personally, I'm really excited for these and uh, I can't wait for the North one to open. Um, and students are kind of wondering as far as like safety and different safety precautions, what's the difference between a dining tent or a student center and then now these new quad lodges? Yeah, that's a great question, Lynette. I'm glad that you asked it because I also have heard that same question <laughs> from a lot of students. So I'm glad to address it. So uh, the university has done studies um, and actually looked at ways to make sure that there is air circulating. So they measure something called uh, air changes. Uh, and they have measured this across these spaces. And so um, what I can share is that in both the dining tents and in these new lodge tents, um, we have the required air changes per hour uh, that are necessary to ensure the safety of the activities that we're planning for those tents. Oh, awesome. So that's kind of why, like in the dining tents, you can take your mask off to eat, but then the quad lodges, you kind of can't only to drink water and those kind of things. Yep, yep exactly. So dining tents are planned for eating uh, and therefore uh, they're set up for students to take their masks off and eat and then uh, you know, hightail it onto the next thing. And in the lodges, uh, they're not designed for eating, they're designed for hanging out. So in the lodges, it's masks on uh, university policy. I was kind of wondering, do you guys have other plans for the winter months, um, other activities, maybe other things being built? Kind of what are the university's plans? Yeah. Great question. Um, so we are, um, it, obviously the winter is providing us with a unique set of challenges in terms of weather and darkness uh, and things that we didn't have in the fall semester, but we're working really hard to embrace uh, the winter weather and to find things for students to safely do outside together. So this Saturday night, we actually, uh, together, student activities and campus dining are hosting a winter fest. So uh, we'll have fun Valentine's themed desserts and hot beverages in the dining halls. Uh, and then we'll have things like horse-drawn carriage rides and mechanical snowboarding and winter canvas painting, to name a few. Uh, happening in the evening on Saturday. Uh, we have similar festivals like that planned throughout the rest of the spring semester too. Um, and then we're also working to really lean in to the winter weather through a number, specifically through a number of uh, outside really fun snow-based programs that we have ready to roll out after we get a significant snowfall. So we're really excited to be sharing those uh, pretty soon with students and also uh, looking at some other like sort of medium term options we can have for students to be able to, to be outside and do fun things in the winter. So our goal is really for them to get outside and be active. Uh, but we know they won't want to be outside all the time. And we also know how important it is that our students don't just stay in their rooms all the time during these dark, cold winter months. So we're working really hard to make sure that there are also fun inside events that follow all the COVID protocols of the university. So both departments sponsoring those, clubs and organizations sponsoring those, just trying to make sure that there's a lot of things to do uh, during these colder winter months. So if you uh, or any students have feedback uh, of things that you'd like to see this semester, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at sao at nd.edu uh, and we would love any ideas that you wanna bring to us. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's already lifting the permacloud a little bit. I know I want to get outside, but I don't know what to do. So this is going to be awesome. I'm really bad at snowboarding. I've tried it, but I might have to try that. Um, <laughs> so that's an encouragement for everybody to see me fall. Um, I will be going to the snowboarding. But seriously, thank you. And you plugged your info. So we had to plug ours. Everybody, we want you on one big question to submit your questions. So make sure you're hitting us up on Instagram and Twitter at Notre Dame with all your questions questions, concerns, and we will do our best to get those questions on the show. So as we wrap up on behalf of Lynette, uh, Karen, thank you. Thank you for all that you yeah. and your team have done and are doing to really uh, to make to make uh, snow time pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so it's really an honor to, to be with you today. And thank you so much for the work that you've done. Until yeah, so uh, we talk again, all the best, everybody.